Minnesota Schoolcraft community. Last week was a special board meeting to discuss transitions between learning models, and we also presented numbers and metrics that we've been using to make decisions regarding learning models during the COVID-19 pandemic. If we haven't met, I'm Mark, I'm Operations Manager here at Schoolcraft, um, also Technology Coordinator, and new this year, I am the COVID-19 Program Coordinator for the school. The Department of Education has had each school designate a COVID-19 program coordinator to be the point person in the school um, regarding uh, COVID-19 and for the school in communications with MDE, MDH, and local public health um, to be able to help take in, sort through all the guidance, the data, the recommendations, the requirements, um, and help advise um, the Adrian, our director, and in other schools, their directors and superintendents have a lot on their plate as they're making decisions um, in light of COVID-19 while they're still doing all of the daily work of running a district. And so every every school has a COVID plan coordinator that um, is there to help out, help sort through all this data, help advise on it. Um, and for Schoolcraft, that gets to be me this year. At our special board meeting, um, we presented on the local case number data. This is a core metric um, that we have been using in our decision making. Um, we shared what we look at, how we analyze it, um, and how we've been using it to make our decisions. In the meeting, it was suggested that it would be good to share this info with the whole Schoolcraft community in an effort to increase transparency and bring some clarity in regards to our decision making process. Um, we're all in this together as a community, and so we want you to know what the data is and how we're using that in our decision making. The first thing I want to talk about is the 14-day COVID-19 case rate by county. Um, it's a lot in the title, but it's a, it's a pretty simple metric when you break it down, and it's one that was given to us and to all schools by the Department of Education and the Department of Health this summer. Um, the two departments working together came up with this as a kind of a core metric while schools were determining how to reopen. Um, the basic idea is to be looking at the total number of new cases in the county over 14 days. And then this is divided to show how many new cases per 10,000 people in the county. The number of cases per 10,000 would then correlate into recommendations for learning models that they could make. So they used that per 10,000 um, so they could kind of bring a standardized metric that all schools across all counties can use, whether it's Hennepin County, um, Beltrami County, or anything in between above and below. Um, as we know, these counties are all very different. The populations are very different. But if we boil down the numbers into a new cases per 10,000 people in the county, we get kind of a common denominator there to go by. So using that per 10,000 metric, um, they gave out some recommendations. If you're at zero to nine, so zero to nine cases per 10,000 people over two weeks, they would at that time recommend in-person learning for all students. 10 to 19 would be in-person learning for elementary students, hybrid learning for secondary students. 20 to 29 would be hybrid learning for all students. And 30 to 49, hybrid learning for elementary students, distance learning for secondary students. And then when you get to the 50, 50 and above um, was recommended distance learning for all students. As we're a K through eight school, we kind of boiled that down to a zero through 19 in-person, 20 to 49 hybrid. 50 and above distance. Again, this works as a standardized metric that any of the schools, any of the counties could use. Um, however, this number and this metric has brought some confusion over the last few months. Initially, like I said, this was a core metric to use to determine the start in the fall. Um, students hadn't been in school since March, so we didn't have a lot of information as to how things would operate in schools, how it would look, how it would run, how it would affect our areas. So we didn't have a lot of real data to pull from. So they provided this metric so we could look at what's happening in our area and make decisions based off of that. Because this is a relatively easy metric to grasp, we've got numbers to look at and we've got correlating recommendations and those numbers are available to anybody. Um, 
you know, it was widely spread. The media picked up on it a lot, did a lot of reporting over the summer to um, bring this information to the public, which is great. A couple months in, um, as schools around the state started to consider changes to how they started the school year, whether it was looking to go more restrictive or less restrictive, many got confused by these recommendations, um, often thinking of them as a mandate or as has been said, a sort of a trap door. If you if you hit this number, it's a trap door. You automatically have to do this. If you hit 50, you got to go distance. Um, with that, MDE gave further clarification that this should be one metric that you should be using, but schools should also have other metrics that are locally created and decided upon that really reflect what is happening locally, whether that be in your county, city, district, even just in your school building as itself. Um, and this was in our initial guidance. And we did develop several metrics and things that we'd look at and took into consideration when making our decisions. So MDE wanted to clarify that the 14 day per 10,000 rating was not the be all end all and you must follow this. Um, when they made that clarification, um, in many cases, the pendulum kind of swung to the other direction from thinking this metric is the metric that you must go by and you must stick to it, um, to thinking, oh, now are they saying that this metric doesn't matter anymore? We don't need to look at this. This was just for reopening. So MDE recently, and in our many meetings with um, Department of Health, Department of Education, and our local public health, they've been working to clarify that even more, that it is an important metric. It shouldn't be your only metric. You should have other metrics that you're considering, but that doesn't mean this isn't an important metric. And for some areas and some schools, the 14-day case rate metric might have more weight than in others, depending on the specific situation, and they're really leaving it up to schools to decide that um, because the local schools, we know our area best. So Schoolcraft and this metric, we view it as a very valuable metric for our situation as Schoolcraft Learning Community here in Beltrami County. This metric gives a good idea of community spread throughout the county. And Schoolcraft is not a school that pulls from one isolated area of the community we pull from a good chunk of Beltrami County, several communities within Beltrami. So the county levels do affect our whole school craft community. And then the school craft community is primarily in the Bemidji area. And as we look at some more of the data, the majority of cases in Beltrami County are in the 56601 zip code. Um, the most recent numbers from the state that we have to compare the overall county numbers to the per zip code numbers, show it at right about 80% of Beltrami cases um, are in the 56601 zip code. So that I believe is as of October 22nd um, is the most recent data to compare those two. So whereas a school, um, especially if you're looking in the Twin Cities, there's multiple districts within a county and they're pulling from specific neighborhoods in specific areas. So the overall county number might not have as much effect as a more narrowed down local metric might for that school. Whereas Schoolcraft, we're pulling from all around the county, predominantly the Bemidji 56601 zip code area, and a majority of the cases in the county are in that zip code. So this metric makes sense for our overall community to show what is happening with COVID-19 in the community. So as we watch this metric, we're able to get a better understanding of the trends um, of COVID spread in the county, which again is a good representation of the Schoolcraft community. One thing that we have decided is that in this situation, we wanna be proactive rather than reactive. We wanna keep a close eye on the situation, be as aware as possible of how it affects us and what we can handle safely so we can act before an outbreak occurs in our school or before we reach a point where we can't adequately staff due to isolations and quarantines. Um, as a small school, 
it doesn't take many staff to be out to put us in a situation where we are not able to adequately be providing on-site education in a safe way. Um, earlier in October, we had points where because of different things, whether it was isolation due to close contact, um, or if it was people who had been experiencing symptoms, which later came out to be you know, a common cold or flu, but following the decision tree that's been given to us by the Department of Health, needing to isolate until getting a negative COVID test back um, or an alternative diagnosis from a doctor. In those days with staff out, um, it does become very difficult. So we want to try and be proactive, see what's happening and get ahead of those issues. A top priority is health and safety for us. That's been from the start. Um, that was even a go goal set by the board this summer. Um, we wanna make sure that our community, our Schoolcraft community and our community as a whole, um, that health and safety is a priority. So as much as possible, we want to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in our space rather than be reacting to spread after it's happened through our community. All that to say, we look at these numbers and we look at them very carefully. We try to take both a broad look as well as a zoomed in look at the numbers we look for trends to try and get as much information out of them regarding what is happening in our community and have that help influence how we're making these decisions to best keep everybody safe, learning and having a great time at school. So we're gonna take a look at some of these numbers and boil down kind of some of the main um, core metrics that we've been looking at. Um, I wanna show how we look at the numbers, what we've been seeing um, well, and even before that, what numbers we're getting, where those are coming from, um, how we look at them, what we have been seeing, what we were seeing when we made the decision to move to distance learning, and what we're seeing now to project trends moving forward. So if we take a look here, I'm going to start out with the numbers that we're getting. Um, the Minnesota Department of Health, Department of Education puts out every week a their, their listing and their data for the 14-day COVID-19 case rate by county. So we get this. It lists out um, a few different pieces of information. And then by county, it gives that ranking of per 10,000 cases per 10,000 over the last 14 days in specified two week periods. So this is good information. It's good to get. One thing you'll notice on here, this came out just this last Friday and this has numbers up to October 17th. So this from the state is usually about two weeks behind um, as they gather all of this data, process it, put it together to send it out to the community. So with that information that's two weeks behind, we can also go ahead to um, the Beltrami County and the COVID-19 response team sends out their situation report weekly. This also gives a lot of information. Um, some of you have maybe seen this. They also put it out over Facebook for the community to see. And um, in here it does list our total new cases for the last week. And so we can also take that to get our more local up-to-date numbers. Um, these are, when they come out on Friday, they are the total numbers through that point when they're sending them out. Then another piece of information that we get daily from Beltrami County Public Health is a breakdown of cases in our area. And here it, it takes in week-long periods breaks it down over age levels. And the main piece that we take and analyze is this one down here. This is the total daily cases. And so each day um, we get up through the total of the day before. So we are getting very real time information um, that is up to date. And so this ends up being our primary source of data when we are sorting through and determining our current case rate. So we take all this information and we put it into some spreadsheets 
that do a lot of work for us. So we can quickly see some results, see what's happening. So if you look here, this one we're taking in, um, documenting those daily case rates, just to at first glance, see some trends. We do have where these red numbers are any daily rate um, of new cases that was over 20. So we can see those, those high numbered days one to see what the frequency is um, so we can see if there's been a lot of really high days but also if our numbers spike up we can quickly look and see was that because a single day that had a lot of new cases now if it's one day with 35 cases and a bunch of days with two three four around it um, we really like those days of two three four and it doesn't totally negate that day with 35 cases but we can see that as kind of an anomaly. Those cases are still in our community, but it doesn't show an upwards trend necessarily. As we looked at recently, we do have a lot of red numbers. But we take that, um, and then here in this chart, it breaks down, um, totaling up 14-day case rates. And these are set weekly, every week giving a new rolling number of the last two weeks. So we can see here when we came through the summer and when we started the school year, we were down in the green. Green is our zero to 19, where the general designation would be in person. Yellow is the hybrid, 20 to 49, and red is distance 50 or more. And again, these are the recommendations. It's not a trap door. When you hit it, you have to go there. But they are recommendations that were put together by public health and the Department of Education. So there's a lot of smart people working together to come up with these numbers. So we can see where we did move in September into the yellow. And as September ended and we moved into October, we got into some red numbers here. We chart this out just so we can visually see the trends. So each of these is the week. And right about in here is where we crossed that 50 mark. We've seen a little bit of a dip as we come in um, through the 27th is our last full week that we had for this. Um, and so with that, we kind of want to watch and see, will that continue or not? Now, this is kind of a broad view. It's taking a snapshot every week of the 14-day case rate. This one's taking the same data. We have that same chart. But we're breaking out here in a daily rolling. So each day, looking at what all right, what is the total amount of new cases in the past 14 days? And then using the formula to figure out our per 10,000 case count over those 14 days. Again, with the same green in person, yellow hybrid, and red for distance recommendations. So this gives us a more narrowed in, zoomed in look at what's happening. Here we can see a lot of green. And as our numbers started to pick up, right around the 12th, here was the first day that we did cross over into that 50 range. Since then, we have had one day, the 16th, where that number dipped just below 50, but otherwise we've been up in the red. And again, we, we took that and put that into a chart so we can visualize the changes. Each data point is the that day's rolling 14-day count. And we can see a few things if we, we can kind of break down in here a little bit. Um, we see early in July, we probably all remember we had a big spike after 4th of July, and we can see that here as it comes up, and it started to taper down at the end of August. Then, as many had predicted and expected, uh, a bump after Labor Day, so we did see that bump go up, but it never really came back down for us, and through September, we continued to rise and continued to rise. Um, so you notice with the with the daily rolling, we have a lot more sharp peaks and valleys, ups and downs, um, because we do have times where as we're rolling those 14 days, we might have a, a very high number that drops off of those 14 days. We might have a very high number that comes on um, or a run of high numbers. So that will fluctuate that a a lot, but we want to look at the trends and see where things are going. And that's where sometimes it can help. And what we've done is we take a look at this, see what's happening, 
And then we switch over and we also take a look and compare with that snapshot each week. This kind of gives a more smoothed out um, taking that snapshot kind of takes out the fluctuation of those daily ups and downs for us. And we can see here we had through September the very clear rise in cases. And we've come to this, you know, ideally that 56 is a, a high point, but we'll have to see what happens there. We can also take a look and view some trends. Um, once we started rising in September, we noticed that we've had some moments where they've it's come down. Every time those cases have come down, however, we've seen a just as quick a jump higher than the previous high point. So here and just the end of September, we had come down a bit, but then we spiked back up, kept going up. We hit a high point and we came down and then we jumped back up even higher. We came down, we jumped back up higher. We came down and we jumped back up higher. We came down and we jumped back up higher. Here just recently, we came down, we jumped back up a little bit higher and we maybe flattened out. This is two days of data points. So the overall trend shows us going up. Maybe over a couple of days, we can see if this will start coming down for us. Now, back around October 12th was when we did make the decision to move to distance learning. So just to show you a little bit of what we were looking at when that time was coming. If we look at, we could start with our 14 day rolling numbers. Coming up on that, we saw when we had our total through October 6th, we were at 197 out of 42, and we'd made a pretty significant jump the last two weeks. So we saw that trend going up. We were watching very closely what was happening, keeping a close eye on everything. And once the numbers came out, um, even before we got to the 13th, we were seeing that, hey, we're, we're getting to 50 here. We are, all the numbers are trending up and it looks like we're going to be heading into 50 and staying there. So we got, to, as we finished this out, we did end up in a 50 and we could look at the more detailed daily numbers. If we come over here to the 12th, we can see leading up to it, how we had a pretty steady increase in our case counts. And then we, on the 12th, we crossed that line into 50. And we looked at this to see what is the trend. Um, it wasn't a, wasn't a case where it was simply we hit 50, we need to start talking about, we need to get into distance learning. It was we've hit 50 and all of the trends have us continuing. So this isn't going to be a short little, we're gonna to touch 50 and come back down. All of the metrics we were looking at said for this, this part that we look at, these cases are going up and they're going to continue to go up, which it did bear out here as we continue to look at that. Right about in here is the 12th. We came up and we stayed up in that area. Um, now, there's a lot of ways that we even dig into these numbers more than what we're just showing here. Um, we kind of run some simulations as we were coming up on the 12th. Um, we took a look at what were our daily numbers for the last 14 days before that? What was our average daily number? So we're not necessarily accounting for these 31s, uh, but we're averaging it all out. And if we continued on that average, where would we be? Um, and it showed on that, if we continued on that average, we would be in the fifties well through November. Um, we also looked and kind of took a low range as we were coming through September into October, um, I believe we looked at kind of went with a nine. So we're not quite into double digits. It's well below what our average was. But if we could come down and be looking at around a nine continually, it still had us in the 50s for quite a while. And that's a lot of cases and a lot of spread happening in our community. And it is keeping us in a point where the Department of Health and Department of Education, and when they develop these working with experts from the University of Minnesota, experts from Mayo. So we've got some of the smartest people really in the world dealing with this have said it would be a good idea to be in distance at this point if you're seeing these numbers. So all of those averages were showing that we would be staying in these 50 ratings for a while. This wasn't likely to be a, a short little blip on the map. 
Um, one other bit that we've started looking at, particularly now as we're we're trying to see what's happening and um, get a good idea of when this might be peaking and coming down, when we're seeing that. So a, a new metric with these formulas that we've started looking at. So this is just a full vertical column of our daily case numbers. And these columns here, what we're breaking down is this in the black is the daily change in our total numbers over 14 days. So if you see here in row 97, that's showing that drop of four from the 13th to the 14th. We are at 235. And the next day's 14 day total was 231. This next number here is taking the average over the last seven days of these changes. So we kind of have an average change rate over seven days. Um, and this is showing the average change was a rise of 3.86. This column here is showing the average change over the last 14 days. So over the last 14 days on the 14th, we had had an average rise of 6.71 in our total 14 day case rate. So right now with the data through the 29th, if we looked at that, our average changes have come down. Um, we did have two days, the 26th and the 27th, where the seven day average actually had us coming down in our numbers by 1.57 each. Um, and then we did come back to 28, back up to averaging a slight increase in our numbers. On the 14 day average, we're, we're down into single digits for changes. So the growth rate average has lowered, but we're still rising. So that's, this is some of the information that we're looking at. Um, we can't tell the future, but we can analyze these trends using the information that we're getting from public health to um, try and make the best decisions we can um, to have a safe and healthy place of learning here. Like we talked about before, these aren't the only metrics. The numbers are one metric. It's one that we do look at very closely for Schoolcraft. Um, but there are other metrics. And I believe Adrian's going to be putting out a video talking a little bit more about those. But we wanted to give you an idea of what we're looking at, what we have been seeing, um, and how these numbers are playing into our decisions as we are discussing how and when to change our learning models. And all of this is to just make sure within our Schoolcraft community, um, we are doing everything we can to keep people safe, keep people healthy, keep people learning, keep people having fun with school. Um, and by doing this and having a proactive approach in our Schoolcraft community, it helps us to have a better impact when it comes to the health and safety of our overall community. Because as school crafters, we know, we recognize that we are a part of this greater community outside of our school. And by keeping our numbers low, by making safe choices, we're also helping out our community so we can all get through this. So we can all bring these numbers down, not just keeping the numbers low in our building, but keeping the numbers low in our whole county. So we wanna all do our part as school craft we are looking to do our part for our direct school craft community and our greater Bemidji Beltrami community um, to help us all get through this time with this current health crisis. So one thing that we can all be doing is um, encourage you, make sure that following some of the basic guidelines, you know, when you're, when you're going out and about, wear a mask, uh, wash your hands, maintain social distancing, um, Try to avoid gatherings of people. Um, a lot of the recent information is showing a lot of the spread is coming from dinner parties, backyard barbecues. We're going to be getting into the 60s this week, and that's going to get tempting. Um, or any of these times where people are coming together and um, not, not really following social distancing guidelines. So let's all do our best. Let's get out there. Let's keep our whole community safe and moving forward and we can we can tackle this together we're a great community and um i just want to say thank you to all the families to the students our staff everybody has been doing a really great job we can 
we can get after this together. We can work together. We can bring these numbers down. We can make sure we're having a safe, healthy, and fun learning environment for school craft learning community. Thanks, everybody.